Hey, what's up, house? It's Aloha. It is me, McCunny. Welcome to Culturize, a space that we get to talk, share, and learn some culture, uh, whether it's ethnic, whether it's social, uh, all those wonderful things. And we're going to get right to it because uh, we're going to drop a lot of knowledge on you. And everybody, it's funny because uh, Uncle was just saying on the side, you ready for the next two hours? <laughs> But of course, here in Hawaii, when we get to sit down and share Manao and Ike and of course sit with people like this, we like to make sure they're welcome and we create a space for them. Uh, mahalo ilono, uh, the Kanaka kid. I know, Auntie. Wrote, what happened, right? Wow. <laughs> Before we talk about this Kanaka kid, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so humbled that you're sitting here with me, Auntie Tony Lee. How are you? I'm fine. I haven't seen you in a while. A while. And it's funny because you haven't seen him since he was uh, 100 pounds ago. <laughs> I know. Mahalo, Lono. <laughs> so good to see you. Uh, so we, I, I want to get right into it because there's so much we can, we can talk about. And I, I love sitting down and talking story with you. Uh, but let's, let's, do, let's do the local uh, formal formalities. Uh, what high school you in? Well... Uh -huh. I went to Kamehameha School for Girls. Uh, Kame you guys are leading again, Culturized Podcast. Kamehameha, I'm getting a lot of Kamehameha guests. So we just figured out, so Kamehameha School for Girls, it was co-ed when we were talking 1965. I graduated in 1959. Wow. When we became a state. Where was, okay, Kamehameha School for Girls, was it on the same campus? Yes, Kapalama. And so was it separated? Where separated. You guys are, Girl um, school on top, boys school. Wow. And then pre pre preparatory school. Where 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 was where was that that line where you guys used to cross? Haleola. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny. Haleola, right? Right. <laughs> where we were where we went when we didn't want to go to school. Now now what what was it like having two well one campus but two separate? Who who crossed over more? The boys went up campus or the girls came down campus? No. <laughs> we really Who was more Awana? <laughs> probably the boys. Oh. You know, because uh -huh. we had they would always come up for for um assembly and Well that was their excuse. Their excuse. <laughs> Check out the girls. But you know, the girls never ended up with Kamehameha boys, right? Because Kamehameha boys like Sacred Hearts Academy. <laughs> I, oh, already, right off the bat. <laughs> and Roosevelt. Right? Roosevelt was a huge school back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is now, but I mean, it was that was almost the comparison of, of ridges, right? You get, you get uh, Makiki over here and you get Kapalama. Um, so when you when how old were you? What grade would you, did you start Kamehameha? I was finally admitted in the eighth grade year. Wow. Yes. Um, eighth grade all the way to graduation. Right. So where where was home? Where did you grow up? I grew up right across the track field of Kaimuki High School in a place called Nahaku Place. I ex the track field is that the what what street is that? On the other between Kapiolani. And date. Oh, that's right. Okay. So where the original, the track is still there. Right. And there's a river in between. So the track field and there was a river it's, yeah. going ever. And I lived right alongside the river. What was it like at the time growing up there? Um, was, did you, did you stay within that circle? Because you obviously, did you catch the bus? Yes. To so it was like in elementary, I went to Kuhio, which was across. Right. Um, uh, Kapiolania, and uh, between Kapiolania and King Street. So I went to Kuhio, and then I went to Washington Intermediate Ooh. for seventh grade. Wow. And then I went to Kamehameha. Where was your playground? Where did, where did you hang Crane out? Park. Crane Park. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, and it's still there, Crane yes. Park. So that was that was your playground. School up Kapalama and, and uh, down at Crane Park. 
Uh, what was it like growing up? It, that that's considered kaimuki, right? Yes. What was it like at that time? Um, growing up was was did you grow up with a lot of other Hawaiians? Did you grow up with uh, uh, lots of Hawaiians? Yeah. Lots of culture. Growing up out okay, so outside of the house, what other cultures were there around you in Kaimuki? Mostly, believe it or not, that the Haku place uh -huh. mostly Hawaiian. Wow. It was amazing. That was like a pocket of them just right there. Right. Um, in the household growing up, uh, I want you to think about this when we come back from this break. Is um, I'm always interested to know how people grew up. Uh, were, was, was culture not forced on you, but say, this is what we have to do. This is our customs. This is our traditions. I want you to think about that. If you're joining us, this is Culturize. We're sitting down with Auntie Tony Lee. We're going to get into all the things she does, but uh, we're going to get a little bit of background on her. That's how we do it right here in Culturize. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHAI THING. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome back to Culturize. It is me, McCunny. I get a chance to sit with Auntie Tony Lee. Um, so that we, we always, we have a relationship we, for a while, but I, I like to get into, you know, prior to uh, you doing what you do today in your adult life, growing up in Kaimuki, in the household, are there things that you, traditions and customs that you grew up when you were young that you put into your adult life today? Values? Absolutely. Well, you know, I grew up in a single family. Um, mm. uh, my mother was a s single adult raising three children. And um, it's ironic on how it all happened and how it really shapes you as a person. Hawaiian was always the culture that we, you know, um, identified with, although I'm Hawaiian, Chinese, English, French, Dutch, Portuguese. Well, so in the house, dominantly Hawaiian culture. Dominantly but, Hawaiian. Yeah. So hula, and I started with Auntie Loka Leah Montgomery wow. in Kapahulu. Wow. And then, you know, when she moved to Hawaii Island, went to Crane Park for hula. Really? Yes. So, you know, how all the different big hula names teaching there at the park. But did, did, did it have that, that, um, that structure at the time, the yes. holiday that's still there? Yep. I didn't know that. And then, of course, I went to Kuhio School. And how ironic I should go there because for the last 58 years, I've been involved in the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs that was formed by Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani and Ole. I gotta ask you this question as, as a hula person. What was it like dancing for Auntie Lokalia? Awesome. Really? Because it was all day, not one hour. Really? Yep. And Uncle Timmy, right. her husband, uh -huh. made all our hula implements. And that's where I learned to eat Hawaiian food because lunch was Hawaiian food. So halau back then wasn't not like today, your parents go drop you off, they sit in the van outside, no. or they go home. They, they drop you off in the and morning, and hula was pow nighttime. Yeah, in the afternoon. What Was it hula all that whole time, or it, was it hula was the reason why you were there, but like you said, you learned to eat Hawaiian food right. there. What are other things that you learned within a hula halau with Auntie well, Lokalia? <clears throat> excuse me. We had, you know, learned, uh, of course, you know, the words and the interpretations and the customs and was was she what kind of kuma, was she harsh no wow auntie lokalia was a very endowed woman wore her hair all on top of her head um she was soft um very loving and so was uncle timmy you know um she made sure we were in the right state of mind in the right posture, how to sit, how to carry ourselves, and you know, all of that. And and see, I I, I like to ask those questions because a lot of not to, not to knock hula dancers, younger hula dancers today, but uh, when you're a hula dancer, you're not only a hula dancer in halal or on the stage. You're a hula dancer twenty four seven. Yes. Which is why I love to see you folks anywhere you go in public. 
always ready to hula. You look put together, right? Um, learning hula, do you remember your first hula? Now, okay, now, did Auntie teach, was it Kahiko and Awana the same time, or you guys had halau every day? Uh, no, we had uh, mostly uh, back then was um, Kahiko. Wow. But what was going on in the community then was Bird of Paradise. You remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. The show? The original one. The original with Deborah Padgett and Louis Jordan and all of that. Do you remember your first hula? What the name of it? Because I don't remember mine. <laughs> oh, was it a kahiko? It was a kahiko. And I can't remember which one. Okay, so I don't feel too bad because I, I my recall is terrible. Like even, I, even a show that I've done, I can go dance in a show. I don't even know what those show. It could be last year. Uh, hold that thought. If you want to think about it, if you're joining us, we're sitting down with Auntie Tony Lee. We're talking some some good stuff. I this is all for me now. I'm I'm I know you guys want to learn some stuff, but I'm getting selfish because I'm learning things about Auntie Tony, and where she's dropping some knowledge on you about hula as well, right here on Culturized. Culturized brought to you by Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Elevate your home's exterior to a whole nother level with Windows Hawaii Low Maintenance Energy Efficient Select Siding. Call 808-671-0808 today. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome back to Culture Rise, sitting down with Auntie Tony Lee. I promise we're going to get into the things that she's doing, but I'm so intrigued by her um, it, it being a hula person. And you remembered your hula over the break, which was? Ayala Opele. Ayala Opele. Um, Part of Pele's trilogy. I, I love that. Um, do you remember your first awana that you've ever learned? Probably Kalua. The, ooh, okay. That was, it, it was almost a standard, yeah. right? Be uh, well, because Bird of Paradise uh -huh. was going on and they were filming and, you know, Deborah Patton was coming to Hula. I, I remember, I think I was, it, was it Uncle Don Ho or was it when we went into the magic of Polynesia? I remember they put that number in there. Put the girl all in white. They were and and it was just uh, birds flying around, and then the, the song starts. Kalua. Um, now in hula, and as as time went on, um, and you graduated from Kamehameha. When what was one of the first organizations? You, you talked about uh, Hawaiian Civic Clubs, but we had originally met from Aloha Festivals. Yes. Are you still involved with them? Absolutely. For a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize. Can you tell them a little bit about who, what Aloha Festival is? And because I understand it's is the longest running cultural celebration event in in the nation. Yeah. Tell people that are listening what what Aloha Festival is all about. Well, you know, Aloha Festivals. We have three host culture parades. So Aloha Festivals is used to be Aloha Week. Okay. And then now it's it's a whole month. It's a festival. Okay, that's what I remember. I remember I used to write pa'u and it was always Aloha Week, Aloha yes. Week. Yes. Um, when did when did it start? Uh, um, it was I like think. early 1900s. Oh, this no. is a here challenge. Anybody know? <laughs> 46, 1946, Aloha Week uh, started. That's amazing. When, when did you get involved with Aloha Week? Well, ironically, uh -huh. I was with King Kamehameha Celebration first. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, and Tikiahi, if you uh -huh. remember her, her husband was injured and lost his hand. And so she couldn't do it by herself. And we were actually cousins. So she called me to come and help my husband and I, and my husband was alive back then, and so we went to help to do that. So for 17 years, I was in that King Kamehameha celebration, either as um, a, com a committee member of the uh, commission or the head of the commission at one time and parade chair for many times. And so did that, were you always doing events like that? No, but you know what started me? The Haku Place. <laughs> Remember that place I grew up? Yeah. Because the Spencer family, Kalani Spencer, uh -huh. I don't know if you remember that name, grew up on Oahu, uh -huh. but moved to Hawaii, to Hawaii Island. Island. He was in charge. All the Pau units used to practice on the Haku Place because the horses used to be tied up in the river. 
in the and that's where they used to have correct me if I'm wrong where they used to have classes and to teach the female pa'u riders to bring their kukui and to tie their kukui yes. Yes. Uh, to pa'u ride yes uh, man I so after Kalakaua uh, organization and then you went right into a you mean the King Kamehameha celebration, King celebration. Kamehameha celebration and you went right into well see and, and as I sat on the curb uh-huh. watching all these people uh-huh. I said someday I want to be a pa'u rider because I was like Pono's age sitting on the curb watching and so when I got to be of age then I tried out and actually, I didn't ride for Kamehameha Celebration. I actually ended up riding for the whole festivals first. I, the fact that you just said you had to try out to be a pub writer. Today, they're looking for pub yeah. writers, right? Yeah. Um, what was the try? What, what you, what, you went to Kapiolani Park, uh-huh. got on a horse, or at somebody's ranch, uh-huh. got on a horse, and rode. <laughs> they just said go? Yeah. Did, now, did you ride before that? Uh, but yeah, down the river. <laughs> and, and you were, I'm going to be a With no rider. saddle. Really? And to ride in Kamehameha Celebration, uh-huh. see, it used to be called Kamehameha Day. Right. Everyone out there, please know, that went away many years yeah, ago, and yeah. they're still doing that. It's King Kamehameha mm. Celebration, because it's no longer a day. Right. It's a whole festival, too. So we had to learn how to do all those kinds of things. We had to learn how to sit, how to mount, how to take care of the horse, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. Now it's just a, can you ride? Yeah. Hold that thought. Look at Hula, Pau Rider. What else does she not do? So uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about Auntie Tony Lee right here on Culturized. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with their local favorites, accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha, this is me, Makari. Welcome back to Culture Rise, sitting with Auntie Tony Lee. Um, I, if you're joining us, right, you thought you knew, Auntie. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, we're talking about Pau now. Uh, when, when did you finally get to... Uh, ride in a parade? Actually, I... And how old were you? Actually, Hawaiian Civic Clubs started a Kuhio Day parade. That's right. And we took those in the 70s into the homesteads. And uh, they were not down Waikiki because I'm the one that took it to Waikiki. Really? Yes. So we went to Waianae. We went to... Why Manalo? We went to Luna Lilo Home Road. Do you, do you think, not to interrupt you, do you think we can do that again? I think that's brilliant. To go. Well, hold that thought because uh-huh. I'm going to tell you why it's not. Okay. Okay. But so I rode there. That's uh-huh. where I learned actually. Wow. So I rode, you know, all the civic clubs had a PAU unit or float or decorated vehicle or whatever. And then I went, got invited to ride for Aloha Festivals. And so I rode in Aloha Festival's parade. Never did ride at Kamehameha Celebration. So when did you decide to say this needs to be in Waikiki? Well, remember Prince Kuhio's mm, statue right. was built on Kuhio Beach, right? By Mayor Harris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I said, well, the Mo'i sits in Waikiki. Why do we not take the parade to the Mo'i and honor the Mo'i? That was the first thing. People said, you know, Waikiki is for the tourist. <laughs> Why are we going to Waikiki? Uh, because we're going to honor the Mo'i. And by the way, Waikiki is our place. I like that. Our Mo'i were born there, raised there, lived there, played there, and worked there. So... We need to bring our people to Waikiki because it is our place. Which is funny because we fast forward and and you've always given me kuleana. (laughs) Speaking of kuhio, I just thought about it now. It must have been uh, 2012, 13. I remember you saying we need to do protocol at the kuhio statue and you're doing it. (laughs) I'm like, okay. 
Right. No, nobody says no to Tony. You do this, you get to do this. Um, so from Aloha Festivals, now you went into, you also involved with Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame. Yes. How did that happen? Because, I mean, they just know you, you can organize events. Well, you know, I learned organization in, of events through the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. In all my years, see, Prince Kuhil started the Civic Clubs to educate Hawaiians and to make them leaders so they could lead this place called Hawaii. And that's where I learned how to, you know, do these things. So one day I got a phone call. I was in California. My daughter, Brooke, had just given birth. And they said, um, Auntie Tony, they had no idea I was there. And they said, um, we'd like you to be the chairman of Aloha Festival's floral parade. And I said, well, I'm in California. This was in July. Parade was in September. I said, and it's sort of short, but there's other people qualified. So they said, well, let me just say this. If you don't do it, then we're going to cancel it this year. Really? I said, oh, thank you very much. (laughs) How's the pressure? Yeah, now the kuleana (laughs) is on me, right? I said, that's not fair to our Hawaiian people. I said, okay, I'll do it. So I got on, hung up the phone, got on the phone, and started. Going through my Rolodex. Wow. And started and got the parade together. And that was my first parade and been there ever since. What year was that? My grandson is going to the eighth parade. What was the years that they used to use Aloha Parade and they showed at the same time as the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade? When we had money. <laughs> because I remember grand. that. I all I remember was <laughs> I, I was doing I was doing a Lahui parade. I was a Pau writer, and they used to show it uh, along with with uh, Macy's Day Parade. And just so happened they showed me when my horse fainted at the end of Kalakaua. It just fell, just fell. <laughs> anyway, if you're joining us, I want you guys. We're gonna talk a little bit more with Auntie Tony Lee. We're gonna go to the extended version. If you're watching on TV, this is. <laughs> Hey, what's up, house? It's Aloha. Welcome back to Culturize. It is me, McCuddy. If you're joining us on the extended version on YouTube, mahalo for that. If you're watching us on TV, listening to the audio portion, let your friends know about it. We're sharing culture, sitting down with Auntie Tony Lee, um, not just organizer, but uh, everything from uh, Kamehameha Celebration to um, Aloha Festival to Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, um, hula dancer, pa'u writer. Uh, you've done it all, and you're continuing to do it all. Um, what is that? The, do you even prior, try, prioritize? Because Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, is that at the top of the list right now for you? Or is it all in one? It's all in one. I shouldn't even ask that question. <laughs> Hawaiian, music, Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, again, another kuleana that you've given to me, and I appreciate you for that uh, because it, it makes me get out of my, um, my comfort zone. Um, like protocol for Kuhio, I was deathly panicking. I was like, wait, I got to do protocol for, for the parade? <laughs> um, and it's funny because every time you would give me Kuliani, you would just say, and I, you wouldn't even give me time to rebuttal. You wouldn't give me time to say no. You would give me time. This is what you're doing. And then Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, um, what year was it? I re- all I remember was I was there uh, I was, I think I was doing hula, and you came up to me and said, "Next year you're doing this," and I was, I thought you were talking about hula. You said, "No, no, you're going to MC this next year," and I was again, no time to say no. And I remember for an entire year I was stressing out because for Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, explain we'll, we'll kind of go backwards, but the the celebration that we have. Um, what was it? The, the stars of... Lay of stars. Lay of stars. That's so what So hold that thought. Uh-huh. Because for your last comment that you made before you, uh-huh. we went on break. You talked about your horse fainting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One year, uh-huh. at the end of the parade, and it was King Kamehameha celebration, someone came up to me, I was a chair, and said, Auntie, Auntie, the horse just died. Oh, no way. And I said, died? Died. I said, why? 
somebody gave the horse water. And you never you know, yeah. give, after going mm-hmm. 4.2 miles right. from Richard Street to Kapiolani Park, you don't give a horse water. You walk them, cool so, them yeah. off, and then. So I'm standing there looking at, uh-huh. okay, my surroundings. You got to be th- quick on your feet. And I picked up the phone, uh-huh. called the zoo. And I said to them, find me the owner, bring uh-huh. him here now. Yeah. Call the zoo. And I said, would you like a horse? <laughs> Dead one. <laughs> right. And they said, you're joking. I said, don't joke. So then by then the owner came and I said, what are your plans for your animal? Are you, do you have right. the wherewithal to pick him up or it up, mm-hmm. put him on a truck? Do you want to take it take away? It or do you want to donate take it to the zoo? The yeah. to feed it to the yeah. lions. And they said, let them take it. Who would have thought about that? Who would have told me would have, hey, feed your horse to the lions. <laughs> I'm telling you, I had to be really quick. That's so guess what? In about five seconds, the side gate opened, uh-huh. and out they came, came with a forklift, boom, picked it up, and it was gone. Who would have said part of your kuleana to be the commission of Aloha Festival was feeding horses to lions? It was lions. not in my job description, <laughs> I'm telling you. See, I, I literally thought my horse died too. This I want to say this was about maybe 93, 94. And by the, right when we passed Royal Hawaiian, I could already see him foaming, right? And I was like, okay, so I'm going to get off and just walk him. No, um, I, I, I don't know who we, we got the horses from, but he made it. He started walking slower. Right when we got to the end, he just gave up. He just literally all fo- uh, hind legs down, down, let me off. And he didn't. I'm standing there with my reins. And I'm like, let's go. He's like, no, I'm good. I'm just going to lie down right here for a while. And the camera, that was exactly the time they were like, okay, Macy's Parade is going to be. Uh, and they, Macy's Parade thing comes on, and there's this kid holding this horse by the reins and the horse lying on the, <laughs> the street. So I'm like, hey, you guys got to cut that off. So all of you out there uh, that have the wherewithal, we'd uh, love to go back to the Macy's Parade. Yes. Back then it was 30000 right. Don't know what it is today, right. but I can't find out for you if you're interested. Because even even the fact we were talking about parades and organizations, what, I know part of it is money, but I remember the times when Kamehameha Celebration, um, Aloha Festivals, everybody had floats. The ama- Hilton Hawaiian Village. You know why? Hawaiian, it was before 9-11. When 9-11 hit, state closed down all the waterfront. We used to build floats, if you recall, yeah. on the piers. The, mm-hmm. Couldn't do that anymore. So everybody had no place to build. And so everybody pulled out. Do you, do you think that would come back? Or would you want it to come back? I would like that to come back. Because, I mean, I remember... Because I think they have a kuleana. Yeah. I just spent I, four days in Waikiki I, at right. 300 some odd dollars a day. It, it's like... I, Need to come up, people. I'm telling you, it's like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing people in a trolley. And that was, <laughs> that was not even come on a rate. Okay, oh, so, man. Yeah. How, you guys never know as Anthony Tony. Come on, you guys. <laughs> um, I would love to see that. I, again, I, you know, maybe you got to reach out to the hotels and say, make it a mandatory. Oh, we hey, do. this has come up. You need a float. Hilton always had a really big float. Yes. Um, Hawaiian Airlines, I remember theirs. Who who else had... Uh, Outrigger would always do a really and good... And don't forget, float. we need a float that is always built every year for the Royal Court. It's, and yeah. bless her heart, Atile Momi Ho, mm-hmm. her halal, her halal steps takes up over, yeah. and builds that float. Used to be Kuhio Hawaiian Civic Club. Oh, and then right. when Uncle yeah. David retired from doing that, I went to Halau because, you know, we all know Halau need they money got, to go right. to Mary Monarch, right? right? So I went to the Halau and, and he said, we got him. I love that. So we pay her to do it. So I, I, I think we should, I think they should make Halau even that. Let's make some floats. and. Oh, yeah. For the last four days, like I said, I was at the CNHA mm-hmm. conference. I was picking up units for the parade. Nice. I'm already at 98 units. Wow. 12 pa'u units. 98 units, 12 pa'u, that, that means, and I, I remember, it's funny, I remember another kuleana you gave me. One year I had to emcee one of the uh, tables by, uh, by the banyan tree. 
<laughs> and I was again nervous because I was like, I got to talk about all these people uh, riding by. Um, all these things you're doing, uh, it's funny because we're always connected with all these organizations that you do. Um, I want to get back as well to, to Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame. When did that start? Well, when Ku'ipo Kumukahi uh, was president, mm. then she got picked to go to be on HTA's board. Mm. When you're on HTA's board, you cannot be the president of a, a Hawaiian oh, wow. organization right. that's going to come ask for money. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I was the vice, and I, I automatically had to step up. So I did. Been there ever since. And Lay of Stars was always it's for the beginning. It's a fundraiser, mm. yes, for Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame. Now, Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame's mission is to promote, preserve, and perpetuate music in hula. Okay. I, I like music and hula because right. they go synonymous, right? By celebrating the achievements of significant individuals and groups. Do you remember who who was the first to be? Who started it? Kahoano Lake. Oh, that's right. And, and who was the who was the first group or artist to be? Um, you have that. Look at that. I love it. Auntie's always on it. With notes, I'm telling you. When, every time she gives me kuleana, she just gives me a stack of papers that says, read it. <laughs> In 1995, we're the uh, first. Who? It was. And we, and we, Leo Stars, and you, it's not only one person, it's a, a handful, yeah, that, that you. That we honor. Yeah, you honor. Oh, yeah. At this time, it was two, four, six, ten. It was um, Keao Lumoku, wow. Henry Berger. Charles E. King, Joseph Kikuku, oh, remember the, him? These are all the Helen Deshay Beamer, Lena Machado, Alfred Apaka, Saul K. Bright, Auntie Vicky, and Mary Kavena Pukwe were the first class. All the classic Hakumele. Aye. Wow. Aye. Uh, if you don't know who these people, that was 1995. Um, and now a lot, so a lot of people used to ask me too, um, when, I, when I was in a, Hawaii Music Hall of Fame, do you just honor those that have hala, those that have passed, or current ones? Because it's uh, it Both. 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 You know, because remember, they only started in 95. That's not that long ago. Right. So there's plenty that have already hala that we haven't even honored yet. Wow. So we try to do some hala and some still going. And is there a committee that. that a committee, at, yes. And they, and they say, okay, we're going to look at them. They have a criteria. Them. Oh yeah, and the whole nine yards. What um, what is part of the criteria that you have to? So musicians that are that are listening now, it's anybody. Is is there an organization that musicians have to uh, be a part of, or it's just any musician in Hawaii, or Hawaiian music? I should Hawaiian say Hawaiian music. Mm. First of all, yeah, gotta be Hawaiian music. Okay, so here we go. Four criteria: uh -huh. creation of music or hula composition that features the use of Hawaiian language and or poetic style, which evidences the highest level of skill, creativity, and nuance. Do you see, I like that criteria, from not only the beginning of Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame in 95, but just Hawaiian music in general and, and you being a hula dancer. Um, do you see there, because I, I see there's this resurgence of Hakumele, these younger musicians now writing music. Because, you know, for a time, we were just repeating the songs over. There wasn't a lot of people writing music. Right. Um, is there certain, are there categories that you honor them? Or you just look at all those criteria and say, okay, we're going we're gonna to honor this. Well, person. you know, the committee mm -hmm. meets and then they toss up names. They have a whole list of possibles uh. and they go over that list and they add to that list every year can, can people outside the committee you know do a referral like oh i know this oh sure i don't know why not alan mm. akako by the way right is the chair for that oh, okay okay yeah. uh which lono's supposed to go see because lono wants to play steel guitar oh uh, yeah one of these days <laughs> he's he's only hula dancer yet but he wants to um Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, Lay of Stars, is usually May. In May, but because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we couldn't have. So 2018 was the last time. That's so crazy. last year, we went virtual. First time ever. Wow. How was that? It was hard. Yeah. But it was 
good. Because mm-hmm. you still got to honor. We still got to honor. honor. Now, it's in May. Um, so not this, now this year, because in May, the pandemic was still right. out of sight. Not that it isn't mm-hmm. today. So right now it's slated for October 29th. October 20th. And that, but that's clo- isn't that close to Aloha Festival? No, Aloha Festivals is the month of September. Well, see, it's funny. And she's like, no, it's not close. <laughs> it's not close. So you know how hard she works uh, <laughs> with that. It's not, it's not close. It's just a month <laughs> apart, a, a, a couple of weeks apart. Um, Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, I remember there was a time where they were looking for an actual physical place because there's there's actually... There's photos and there's there's mo'olelo, there's stories of all these musicians that you folks have honored. Um, where where can they find it now? Where because I remember it used to be. Where did I see it? Was it at the airport at one time? I, I'm sorry, the Hawaiian Music Hall. No, they, Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame has been. It was at the Marriott. That's okay. It was held at Dole Canner mm-hmm. Ballrooms. It was held at the uh, Royal Hawaiian Hotel. But all those pictures that they have, and the those core stories, panels, yes, they are now in um, on lures between lures and uh, beach walk um, called the Royal Room. That's upstairs right. yeah, yeah, on the yeah, second yeah, yeah, floor yeah, yeah. called the Royal Room. Okay, that's because I remember the the last time I did it, they were looking for a place. Uh, to feature all these, the, the last cool place panels. it was was the at the uh, Marriott. So if if you're watching, if you ever wanted to uh, learn stories about past uh, Hawaiian music uh, artists and musicians, it's it's an amazing uh, Bishop Museum. It would never be there. No, Bishop Museum covers the entire Pacific and South Pacific. They don't have room. Uh, they need Bishop Museum. Hawaiian <laughs> Music Hall of Fame. Is the highest honor in uh, our land. See, I would, I would think at least they would do an exhibit. No, we're Makani, just going to put it out there. Hold on to your chair, <laughs> and audience, uh-huh. hold on to you, your seats. Uh-huh. Do you know that in all of Hawaii, there is no museum for music in hula? I see none. I that's what I'm saying. So when Joe Blow comes off the airplane uh-huh. and says, "You know, I am this pla- in this place of rainbows uh-huh. and sunshine and sea, uh-huh. ocean and sand." That big guy that <laughs> plays the music and sings uh-huh. the best rendition uh-huh. of yeah, um, what's that famous Some, song? Somewhere over, somewhere the, rain- over yeah. the rainbow. Yeah. Where can I go exactly. to hear his music? Mm-hmm. There is no place. That's why I always say, because I remember we had these conversations about where are these people going to know. Uh, Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, Aloha Festivals, Kamehameha Celebration, um, What Don't You Do? We're sitting with Auntie Tony Lee. I, I got to say, Auntie, as you're busy, so you're mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for being here, um, making time to, to come share with us a little bit about uh, your background and what you do now. If anybody wanted to get involved in any of these organizations. Call me. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so that's what Culturize is all about, right? If you ever wanted to peel to something cultural, um, perfect person to uh, get in touch with. So call her. We're not going to put your number on the screen because everybody going to call you for everything. So uh, get in touch with us. Comment down below. We'll get you in touch with Auntie Tony Lee. This is Culturized. This year's inductees, uh-huh. you want to know? Okay, yes. Oh, okay, we're going to... Spoil it right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to spoil it. Because we want Hold you on. to come. We're okay. selling tickets. Yes, who are, we, who are we honoring? Jules Aussie. Oh. You remember him? Yeah. Kihei and Mapuana de, de Silva. Silva. And they're halau. Kawai Kapu Okalani Hewitt. Oh. David Kalama. Makua Layana. And Mary Robbins. Now, the last three are probably, you know, those were people that wrote songs, him, uh, Nahimene songs. And oh, Okay. Yep. I like it. it sounds, and it's going to be at Halikulani. Halikulani. And I like it already because there's going to be a lot of hula, yeah. right? And you cannot just have uh, melee without hula. Uh, so Halikulani, if they want more information on, on the Lay of Stars, is there a website? HawaiiMusicHallOfFame.org. All right. You guys heard it from Auntie Tony Lee. When you see her on the street, she's going to give you kuleana, but still say aloha. <laughs> it's culturized. Thank you, Auntie. You're welcome. <laughs>